All right, we're going to start with this one. It's been a while since we actually did uh, zeros of functions. And before we start with complex conjugates, I just want to come back to these uh, and get used to this. So starting here, I have x squared plus 4x plus 12. And so I need to find my zeros of this function. If you remember from the last time we actually took notes, uh, we started by just completing the square. So that's the same path we're going to head down. We're going to set this equal to zero. And we're going to subtract this 12 over to the other side. x squared plus 4x and that equals negative 12. Now we're going to complete this square here. So we're going to do 4 divided by 2 squared. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Squared is 4. So I add 4 to both sides. Once I do that, I now know that uh, this left side is going to become x plus 2 squared. And I know that because this was a 2 inside of here before we squared it. And then that's equal to negative 8. Now to solve it, I take the square root of both sides. It gives me x plus 2 on the left. On the right, I can break that negative 8 down. Because it's a negative, I know I'm going to have an i. And then break down your 8 to 4 and 2. 4 is a perfect square, so a 2 comes out in front from the 4, and a 2 stays inside. And the only part I left off of this was the plus and minus. Now to finish solving, I have to get this 2 over to the other side. So I have to subtract it over. Our answer is negative 2 plus and minus 2i root 2. And if you remember, this is a complex solution. And the reason it's complex is because we have a real part here along with an imaginary part here. That takes us to our next type. So if we have the solutions of negative 5 plus i root 10, negative 5 minus i root 10, these two are related. And they're called a complex conjugate pair. You'll notice that their real parts are equal to each other, negative 5, and the imaginary parts are opposite. In other words, one's a positive i root 10, and the other one's a negative. The complex conjugate of any complex number a plus bi is the complex number a minus bi. So if a quadratic equation with real coefficients has non-real roots, then these roots are complex conjugates. I'll give you so let's find each complex conjugate here. If I have 8 plus 5i, looking at this, if you remember from uh, our last page that we just set, our real part has to stay the same. So it's going to be 8. And to find the complex conjugate, it's the same number here, 5i. Just flip the sign. So our complex conjugate just becomes 8 minus 5i. If I look at part b here, 6i is really just 0 
plus 6i. So you keep the same thing. 0, flip the sign, becomes minus 6i. And you really don't even have to worry about the 0. Your answer would just be negative 6i. So far, pretty easy, right? That's going to become a little more complex as we move forward. Here are just some more examples. Keep the real part the same. Flip the sign of the imaginary part. becomes 9 plus i. Over here, it's in reverse order. Oops, remember, same policy. Imaginary part changes, the real part stays the same. Same thing here, it's a negative i, 8i becomes a positive 8i. Any questions there? Okay. Well, that's basically it for our section. Um, the only thing that I want to point out is what the uh, complex conjugate means. Uh, the complex conjugate just means that we're going to, we can end up with a, uh, this, when I have 9 minus i, and I multiply it times 9 plus i, it gives me a quadratic of sorts. I just do the same thing I've been doing, distribute that. It gives me 81. Then outside, it gives me plus 9i. Inside, that's going to make it a minus 9i. And last, you're now going to have minus i squared. That's just using the FOIL method for distributing both terms. Now, if I combine my like terms in the middle, positive 9i minus 9i, those are going to cancel each other out. And I have 81 minus i squared. Mm -hmm. If you remember, uh, the square root of negative 1 is i. So it works backwards as well. If I have an i squared, i squared equals negative 1. So now I can just be, make that a negative 1. It's 81 minus negative 1, which would become 82. And that would be your answer for the complex quotient. Any questions? Is there, yes, there's an assignment tonight, yep. Yeah, your assignment will cover uh, this complex conjugate stuff um, in the, just a little bit going back onto the imaginary uh, roots and things like that. All right, well, if you don't have any other questions, you are free to go. Uh, I will post the video in the assignment shortly. And uh, I will post it to a flock. But 